Yeah, this video is going to be awesome and really fun to do and uh, really fun for you guys that are watching at home. First of all, thanks for spending your uh, Friday watching this quick little video with me. This is going to be one of those macro videos. We're going to look at the hobby as a whole. Football, baseball, basketball, soccer, hockey, uh, sorry, no TCG, none of that stuff, but we're going to look at the sports and then we're going to look at uh, basketball specifically, what some of the more collectible players, um, retired and active, are doing over the last three months. And then lastly, we're going to kind of look at basketball and just see which players, top to bottom, which players' indexes are doing the best. We're going to use Card Ladder for all of our data. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. It's been a long time coming. We got lots of green for y'all, baby. So check this out. Hopefully you enjoy it. You've got a bunch of unwanted inventory that you've been sitting on for days, weeks, months, years. Ship it to Fanatics Marketplace and let them do all the work. Just make sure when you ship it, you use the promotional code CAJUN, all capital letters, C-A-J-U-N. Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. And today's one of those, uh, just a fact check, right? It's just one of those videos where like, you know, I've been doing consistent videos for the last three, four, six, eight, ten, twelve two and a half years, but specifically the past 30 to 45 days, I've started you know, doing the Fanatics weekly recaps, looking at some crazy eBay sales for Jordan stuff, even looking into the Kobe market, which so many of you guys loved that I recently did a Kobe video. There's a LeBron video coming soon, don't worry, and we're gonna touch on LeBron in this video as well. I started to feel something. <clears throat> you know how you do something for long enough and you can kind of just feel if something's off. You got that, that preternatural instinct that's like, mm, something's not like it normally is. Well, that thing that's not like it normally is is that prices of everything is going up. And uh, I wanted to just confirm and make sure I wasn't crazy. So I've asked around, I've talked to people, I've asked dealers how they're doing. I've asked friends of mine who sell on eBay. I asked vintage friends of mine. I asked active friends of mine, baseball, football, basketball. I've reached out with the Cajun tentacles all through the hobby and said, are y'all feeling what I'm feeling? And to a T, every single one of them without hesitation said, something's different. There's a shift in momentum. Prices are moving up. Demand is going up. People are getting excited. The general attitude is positive. And so let's look at Card Ladder. They've got a great index feature where you can search by sport, you can search by player, you can search by players within a sport, you can sort it, you can minimize it, you can do all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna switch over to screen share and we're gonna start with the most step back, the biggest step back you could take and the biggest, uh, most distant view of the hobby you can take. And that's the indexes feature. So Card Ladder's got all these different indexes in here. They've even got obscure stuff like racing, UFC, outlier cards, <coughs> entertainment cards, etc., etc. We're going to look at the five sports, right? And when I say five, I mean soccer, hockey, baseball, basketball, football. Sorry, I know tennis and golf and wrestling allegedly is a sport. I get all that, but we're going to look at the five big ones. So if we're looking at one week here, the one thing I want you to pay attention to is, do you guys remember about a year ago when I'd look at the indexes, and I did it maybe once every couple of months, every single thing was red. Literally every single index was red. Occasionally you'd get a little pinch of green because something happened in tennis or a particular player's card sold for a lot in golf or something like that or maybe a Star Wars card did something. Uh, but we're looking at a lot of green right now. And let's start with baseball up 2.5% over the last week. Uh, we've got basketball up in the green over the last week, albeit tiny. Now look, seven days is not enough time. So let's start to zoom out. Let's just be a little more practical here. One month, that's 30 days, that's a lot of data, that's a lot of sales, that's a lot of individual data points that are gonna lead you down a path. Check out football over the last month, up 5.83%. It's hard for an index with so many constituent data points to go up 5% in 30 days. That is like immeasurably difficult to do. That has not happened very often. High-end cards are up 5%, uh, 5%, but guess what? So are high pop cards, which usually means low-end cards. Not always, but usually means uh, that it's usually they're you know counterintuitive. They're uh, not correlative, right? They don't they don't they they whack when one waxes the other wanes and vice versa. 
Baseball up over 5% over the last 30 days. Basketball up 3.35%. Uh, let's keep going. Soccer is slightly up over the last 30 days. Uh, I'm looking for hockey. Hockey is down over the last 30 days. Let's back it out to 90 days, okay? 90 days. Tennis, I don't know what's happening in the tennis world. It's up 17%. My guess is the tennis index is not a very large one. It's not a very uh, robust. Uh, that's what she said, I think. Does that make any sense? I don't even know if that makes sense. It sounded like it made sense. Robust. The robust nature of the index on card ladder is probably uh, a misconception. It's probably not very many tennis cards on the card ladder. Uh, database, not because we don't love tennis, but because there's just not that many collectors. There's one tennis collector for every, you know, 50,000 baseball card collectors, for instance. Quite likely. Football over the last 90 days, oh my gosh, is up 8%. Baseball up 4.93%. Where's our guys? Where's basketball? There he is, up 3.77%. <clears throat> Let's find hockey real quick. I'm upside down. I'm missing it. Here it is. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, where is it? Mid-end. I love mid-end. Uh, there's soccer down 3% over the last 90 days. Hockey is getting beaten uh, beaten with a hockey stick over the head, down 6% over the last 90 days. Let's back it out one last time to six months. Six months, there's fewer greens. So what that means to me is, and it's just common sense, right? Even a Cajun could figure this out. If uh, there are fewer greens uh, six months ago, more three months, more one month, even more in one week, that means we are hitting a bottom and then starting to turn the corner because some of these indexes that are red on your six month change turn to green over three months, over one month, over one week, which means that we're hitting the bottom and we're starting to move up. Just like the Kobe Bryant card video I did the other day, which everybody loved so much. Okay, that's the big picture stuff. Let's get into basketball specifically. I want you to stay with me here. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm going to show you the basketball, baseball, and football indexes uh, over the last uh, one year. Every graph is going to look the same. Look at this graph. Starts way up here, comes all the way down, hits the bottom, and then what happens around May of 2024? That's about two months ago, three months ago. It starts to run. Okay, that's what basketball is doing. What about the one year football trend? Guess what? It hit it a little bit earlier, around February or March, but what has it done since February or March? It has started to run up and to the right. What about baseball? It starts way up here, it comes all the way down, it finds a floor. What has it started to do since early August? It has started to run and run drastically, baseball specifically, and then we're going to get into the players. But what I want to show you is that's one year. It's down 8% basketball, down 11% football, down 7.6% baseball. But watch what happens when I go to, say, three months, up 3.87% baseball, uh, sorry, football, up 8% <laughs> over three months, baseball, up 5% over three months. Okay, so do you guys see what I'm seeing? We've come down, we've hit a floor, we're running. Now, does that mean over the next three months it's going to replicate and it's just going to be more of the same? No, it doesn't mean that. It means we might go back down or it might level out and hit a floor. It might mean that, you know, supply and demand, you know, interact in a way that we hit a saturation point and we just meander for seven more years in a row. Anything can happen. It doesn't mean that it's constantly going to be going up and to the right. It's not like panic is going to set in and we're we're going to have a chaotic 2021 bubble like we used to, right? That's something we don't necessarily want to see. I don't necessarily want to see basketball cards go up 111% over the next 12 months because inevitably, and this is just history, we know what would happen <coughs> if we saw something that inorganic and that unsustainable is that it would irrefutably, undeniably, and inevitably come right back down another 100% and then would find a new floor and then we'd figure it all out again. Well, I wanted to already be at the point of figuring it out. I know the education in the hobby is much, much more um, pronounced now than it was back in 2021 when the whole hobby was tricked into, uh, you know, that price spike that we endured, right? We didn't, uh, I say we, because I'm part of the hobby. I mean, I think I had a little better grasp than most of the new money folks that came in in 2021, but that don't make me any better. It just means I was here earlier than they were, and I've had more time for trial and error and to understand the way the hobby dynamics work from an economic perspective. Um, I don't think we're going to fall for that again. I think that the hobby is too educated for there to be that precipitous of a rise in the prices of sports cards across the board. I 
Now, maybe I'm naive, but I just I'm giving us a little bit more credit that you know we're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe, right? If you don't know where that's from, you're probably too young and you're missing one of the greatest movies ever made, Beverly Hills Cop. Axel Foley. We're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. I just want fanatics and them to know we're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. All right, so let's look at Michael Jordan, right? We always start with Jordan. Jordan leads the way. Jordan is always the harbinger of things to come. He is the one that leads the way. Jordan is up 21% over the last three months. This is not PSA 10s. This is not BGS 9.5s. This is not high-end Jordan. This is not low-end Jordan, if there is such a thing. This is Jordan. This is uh, how many? 1,799 different measured data points in the card ladder database over the last three months, up 21% over the last three months. What about Kobe? Well, we know what Kobe's doing because I showed you. Up 2% over the last three months, but more impressively, uh, up over the last one month and really up over the last week. If I had to guess, two weeks now, it's about the same. So Kobe, not as pronounced as it looked like. Maybe I just had a bad sample size or a good sample size, depending on your perspective as a Kobe buyer or seller, uh, in that video that I recently made that was so well received, showing Kobe prices seem to be going up on certain Kobe cards. How about this guy? Remember him? The he who shall not be named, right? All you Harry Potter dorks out there know what I'm talking about. LeBron James, 1,087 cards in his uh, card ladder database. And LeBron James, the LeBron James, that's right. The guy that nobody, everybody's ashamed to share his cards, right, on Instagram. For whatever reason, people that collect LeBron are lurking in the shadows and scared to talk about it. Well, I'm proud to say I'm a LeBron collector. I'm a Jordan goat. I'm a LeBron second. And then I'm a Kareem and Wilt right after that. I'm proud to say that I have a pretty good LeBron James collection. And it's, I'll be honest with you, I'm probably going to add to it over the next 90 days. Uh, despite the fact that his cards are up 7.8% over the last three months, up 5.8% over the last one month. That's great, great indications for the LeBron James market. What about the next probably most collectible player? Maybe, I don't know, am I missing somebody? I would think Steph is right there. Doncic is coming up. But we got Steph. Look at Steph. Completely flat, but it's not a boring flat. It's a, oh my gosh, what happened here? To all the way up there. And again, I don't think this is nearly quite the, it, it looks like it's down 80%, up 80%. No, it's just the way that the graph is measuring it it's really not that you know massive of a swing down or up but uh, Steph is exactly even over the last three months over the last one month he's showing some signs of life right here and when you see a big move like that in a very short time frame it just means a humongous Steph card sold either for way above comps or way below comps and it uh, massively skews the data if it's a humongous you know nine hundred thousand dollar card that could swing a day you know from a bad day to a good day depending on what the last comp was and so that's how indexes just that's just how indexes work. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal uh, up four percent over the last three months. Over the last one month, actually a little bit down. That really kind of surprises me. I feel like Shaq started running before three months ago. What about six months? No, nah, six months is not too big a deal. But he's over the last year he's plus four percent. Whereas uh, you know Kobe over the last year down 7.38%. So that's that's kind of what I saw, and that's what I would have guessed, that Shaq hasn't done bad over the last year, like a Kobe, uh, like a LeBron. Watch, when I switch to LeBron over here, I know this is going to be super red, 25% down over the last year. Curry is going to be the same thing. Kobe, we said 7. Curry over the last year, I know this is going to be bad. Uh, 8% over the last year. I bet Jordan is probably about even. I'm not, I'm just, I could sound like an idiot here. Up 14%. Okay, I was totally wrong. I sound like an idiot. Jordan's actually up 14%. Well, it's because he's up 20% over the last three months. Of course he's up over the last year. If he's up 20% over the last three months. So let's keep going. So there's Shaq. Shaq's doing great over the last year. Shaq's doing great over the last six months. Shaq's doing fine over the last three months. Shaq's doing fine over the last one month. He's flat pretty much. What about Doncic? Oh, what's this? You're going to look at an active player? Yeah, I'm looking at an active player. We got Doncic pulled up. 731 data points. So this is a robust, there's that word again, index. Uh, up 2% over the last three months. I think that's great news, and I love this graph. Uh, uh, notwithstanding this absurd spike right here from 47.82 to 48.11, he's up 1% over the last one month as well. Uh, it's going to be a little bit jacked up here. Look at that chart. Up. 
0.93% over the last two weeks. Like I said, with indexes, with so many data points and so many constituent parts, it's hard to move up or down very much in a short time period like two weeks unless something crazy sells. Uh, but I like all signs indicating Doncic is actually starting to recover. So what happened to Doncic over the last year? I am going to go ahead and tell you this is going to get blood red disgusting if I had to guess. I have not looked at this. No, it's only 8%. Okay, I would have thought it would be much worse. This is going to be bad. 50%, yeah. So Doncic cards took their beating, right? They took that paddling, all you fraternity dorks out there. It took its paddling, and now he's bounced back, and his pledge year is over, and he's actually part of the fraternity of those basketball players whose cards are going up. You like how I kind of interjected that analogy in there. What about Jokic? Now, somebody else has got to explain this. The great Chris McGill has got some explaining to do, but if I know anything about the great Chris McGill – who is one of the uh, the creators and founders of Card Ladder, the actual um, you know uh, software that we're looking at right here, my data pricing tool of choice? Chris McGill is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Nikola Jokic collectors in the world. If there's one thing I know about Chris McGill, he loves that Jokic is down over the last three months. He is in heaven right now because he is buying like there is no tomorrow. Over the last six months, Jokic is still okay. So it looks like Jokic just kind of spiked leading up to uh, the playoffs, and then it's you know kind of recovered coming down. Jokic is actually up over the last year, so really good for Jokic. Uh, better than Curry, LeBron, Kobe over the last year for sure. So uh, last thing we're going to do, I'm in basketball play only. I'm in three month change. I wanted to do 90 days and I'm only choosing players whose index and card ladder has more than 100 parts. Okay. So it's not going to have what well, might have women Yama, but it's not going to have uh, some of you more obscure players. Scotty Barnes, probably not in here, etc. cetera, but uh, look at who's leading the way. And I never would have guessed because this is like the most, the quietest, you know, record holder in the world. Paolo Banquero cards are on the uptick up 27% over the last uh, 90 days, which is shocking to me. We know Jordan's up over 20% because we just looked at it, right? So MJ is right there uh, trying to keep pace with the great Paolo Boncaro. Um, and then John Morant is next. I think a lot of people are expecting Ja to have a nice comeback season. I don't know. I'm just not sold on that Memphis Grizzlies roster, the way it's constructed. That's just me personally. I just think JJJ is a biatch for lack of a better word i think he is a paper champion i think he's smoking mirrors but everybody seems to think the big two is going to get it done in memphis so we'll see john morant is coming back i'll tell you this right now i sprinkled some money on john morant and fanduel and when i say sprinkled i think i spent 20 dollars on john morant to win mvp because it was like plus 50,000 or something crazy like that. And I was like, well, hell, you don't know. If the Grizzlies somehow win 60 games, John Morant averages, you know, 38 and 8, and he damn well might get MVP because you know how MVP voters are. They like to vote for something new. So that eliminates Jokic, quite likely. That probably eliminates Embiid because he's not going to play enough games. Giannis, probably not going to play enough games. And so, uh, you know, you got John Morant fighting with some of those folks out there for that MVP award, the Halliburtons and uh, the Doncic's, who's right there. And then, of course, the great Victor Wimanyama is going to be in the mix as well well if the Spurs can somehow win 41 games. LeBron James cards. Oh my gosh. So LeBron is the fourth best index of players in the Carlotta database with more than 100 data points plus 7.8% over the last 90 days. That's interesting. Shaquille, KG, Embiid cards doing okay. Doncic, Halliburton, Tim Duncan cards up a bit. Zion cards are actually okay over the last 90 days. As the season approaches, your flipper types are going to try to get in and out of Zion. There's a lot of hype around the Pelicans. By the way, don't forget, they do have a point guard now. They finally got one. DeJounte Murray is a Pelican. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I think CJ McCollum might be that off-the-bench bucket getter guy now, which is probably where he belongs, not being the starting point guard for an NBA basketball team. Uh, you know, and then you got Trey Murphy and you got Herb Jones. It's a nice team. It's an interesting team to look at. JV is gone. Valanchunas is gone. So they got to figure out that center position. You can't play a 6'6 fat guy at center. Julius Irving cards are up. And then, then we start to see the cards that are a little bit down over the last 90 days. So a few down, a few up. Trey Young down. Who's the worst down here? Jokic is at or near the bottom. Tatum cards are getting murdered uh, because all he did was win an NBA title. Uh, not get finals MVP, which is like you're almost better not off not winning the title and not winning finals MVP than winning the title and the dude next to you, Jalen Brown, gets the finals MVP and Eastern Conference finals MVP. So it was a sweep for Jalen Brown. Uh, and then Tatum goes and sits the bench and complains about it in the Olympics. So his cards are not doing well right there. 
Uh, I think we're still trying to figure out if he is really a superstar or if he's just a really good player on an amazing, historically good team. We're going to find out in the next year or two. And by the way, he will certainly be in the MVP conversation because if they win, you know, 69 games, that's what... Never mind. If they win 69 games, he's going to be in the conversation. If they win 65 games, he's going to be in the conversation for sure. Uh, he's going to get that best player, best you know team argument. Dirk Nowitzki, Giannis not doing great. Jordan Poole has more than 100 cards in the database. I don't know why. I guess he was hot for a minute there. Jokic, Ant Edwards cards have cooled off a little bit here. And then uh, Penny Hardaway cards and Trey Young cards as well. God, Trey Young. I haven't heard his name in forever. All right, guys, let me know. That's just a bunch of quick... Um, you know, big picture looks at the hobby, at certain players within basketball, at some of the bigger, more collectible players in basketball. Let me know what you think. Do you feel what I feel? Do you feel the momentum? Am I crazy? It looks like the card ladder index is sort of supported, right? You can pick this apart. You can nitpick. You can ask the cards that are in there. But when you're talking about huge indexes with like high hundreds, if not thousands of cards, it's a pretty big sample size, and so I don't know what else there is to nitpick about it. I mean, if it says Jordan's up 20%, then he's up. Maybe it's 18%, maybe it's 22%, but he's up for sure. Um, you know, I'm thinking I like what I see. I like the idea that the Steph cards are starting to move up. I like the idea that Kobe and Shaq and LeBron and those guys are starting to do better. Uh, I did not know Paolo Moncaro was a hobby darling that he is right now, atop the hobby mountain type for the uh, card that's, you know, cards that have appreciated the most over the last 90 days i would not have suspected i would see paulo Bancaro at number one but it is what it is let me know out there shout out yourself if you're a paulo Bancaro investor or collector uh i've never met one so it'd be nice to meet you if you're out there um that's it guys just one of those uh one of those friday videos where i've got some time and i figured hey let's go check in on the hobby spread some good news and maybe get these get these guys these viewers off to a good start on their weekend Throw some positive vibes out there so y'all can have fun on this three-day weekend. It's a Labor Day weekend, three-day weekend. My LSU Tigers play in Las Vegas. The city is empty. I'm just telling you right now, if you don't know how it works in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, every year when LSU plays in one of these huge-ass games against some other massive team like USC, they go to Dallas, they go to Miami, they go to Atlanta, they go to Vegas, the whole city disappears. I'm telling you, subtract 100,000 people from our ordinary daily population, and that's what it's like. It's a ghost town in here. Nobody's closing in real estate on the last Friday of the month because nobody is here. They're not buying things because they're in Vegas eating, drinking, and watching the Tigers play uh, play football. So um, interesting stuff going on here. Guys, if you like my videos, if you like the channel, first of all, thank you for everybody that's subscribed. You can go click the like button right now. I know it sounds stupid and petty, you know, petty and trivial. It actually helps me with YouTube and it's proven that it's helping me in YouTube. I've grown from 40,000 views a month to over 105,000 views in 30 days. So something has happened with YouTube, with the algorithm where people are finally starting to recognize my voice with the Cajun dialect and tune in and think that maybe I've got something good to say. So thank you guys that have subscribed. If you want to support the channel, there's two huge ways you can support the channel as of right now. There's about to be more. Some good news coming. Some good partnerships that I'm about to announce. They're not official yet, so I don't want to jump the gun or jinx anything. Two huge ways you can support the channel right now. Number one, you can buy on the Fanatics Collect Marketplace, the weekly, the premier auction, the Buy It Now Marketplace, by using the affiliate link that is in this YouTube description. You just have to cut it paste it into your web browser, hit enter, and then everything that you buy on Fanatics, a little piece of Fanatics money will come to support my big mouth Cajun uh, cardboard YouTube channel. The easiest way, however, is to, let's say you've got a bunch of raw cards, you've got a bunch of graded cards, you've got cards that you're not in love with anymore, they don't tickle your fancy for lack of a better term, and you wanna get rid of those cards and go buy the damn cards that you love. You wanna get into these freakish Paolo Boncaro cards that are exploding right that we just looked at if you want to go out there and buy a hell of a lot of Paolo Macaro cards you're gonna need some money the easiest way to make money just send your cards to fanatics collect man the submission process is a joke it is so step-by-step -step easy trust me there's no easier platform out there if you want to sell your cards click sell now click graded cards you don't even have to make an inventory just say I'm sending you 65 PSA graded cards promo code what is the promo code Cajun all capital letters C-A-J-U-N send 
pack them up, send them, and then they're on the weekly auction in a week or two, and you can pick and choose which cards go into which auction. You may even want to put them in your free vault, free storage for life for cards over 50 bucks. Maybe you want to put them, maybe you want to stagger them. Weekly 139, weekly 140, weekly 141. You don't want to sell them all at once. You don't want to overload one auction with a particular player's card. Space them out. Space them out as long as you want, or don't sell them at all. Just put them in your vault. Either way, you can support the channel by using the promo code CAJUN, all capital letters, C-A-J-U-N, when you submit your cards to fanatics whether to vault or to sell them that's it guys i'm done paying bills thank you guys for watching as always i hope you have a great weekend keep collecting stay positive in the hobby peace